Alright, it is about 8 o'clock, just heading into the office. I've got a live stream that I'm setting up. We go live at 10. Tables in place, computers in, all my gears here. Now it's time where I gotta set up my table and make sure my workstation makes sense and that all my connections are ready. Alright, so I'm mostly roughed in. I'm gonna need this camera in order to like make sure everything runs right. So from now on, it's gonna be set up. And I think Keith is here, so let's go see him. Good morning, Keith. Good morning, how are you doing? Good, good. Can you hand something? Uh, Once you and you're ready. Hey everybody, how are you doing? And uh, it's Coach Keith and welcome back. Status, certainty, autonomy, relational and fairness. If you remember, it is the filter in which all the information comes in and creates feelings where we go out and then we take actions on those feelings and then that is the result that we get. Now live streaming is something that's grown a lot over the last few years, right? We're all used to seeing uh, you know, live streams coming off of cell phones. I'm still seeing big organizations, you know, filming events with just like a cell phone, right? So they'll have it like not even all that close to the speakers, they have it in the middle of the room. It's a cell phone picking up the, uh, the ambience of people are just like chatting away and talking. Uh, it picks all that up too. So not just the speakers, but uh, everything. The sound is horrible, image is questionable, and you know, it's really, it happens a lot and there's times when that makes sense but there's also a lot of times where it doesn't make sense so the ability to film with an ice camera and do that live uh, is a really great thing to be able to offer people um, I work with a lot of businesses so um, events is not something I normally do but it's uh, having the live option has certainly helped that um, and I've been asked to do more and more live uh, you know, live projects. So I've been doing live streaming for a little while now. But last year I was approached by someone at my office who does a lot of events, he does a lot of social media marketing, and he wanted to do a live stream of an event. And we looked into it. Um, unfortunately it was kind of last minute so we didn't have a chance to get the equipment that we needed. But when I was looking at doing that event, one of the things that came up was this object right here. Now this is the Blackmagic Design Intensity Shuttle. And what this does is it allows me to plug in uh, not only my DSLR, but also audio from other sources. So recently I've been asked to do um, a webinar series, right? So I'm working with a business coach and that business coach wants to be able to coach, you know, uh, hundreds and thousands of people at once. And so what he does is he offers these uh, kind of weekly coaching seminars where he goes through an idea and he presents it and he does it for over an hour. Uh, and people are commenting, people are talking, asking questions, uh, and it's really great. And so a few months ago, he approached me about doing that. And I'd been running a few live stream events uh, over the last year and had some experience, but what they wanted to do was a little different because they wanted to integrate it with a program called Webinar Jam. Now, Webinar Jam offers its own set of issues and questions. Maybe I'll get into Webinar Jam later because that's a bit of a thing. So the setup that I've been using is I'm shooting a 5D Mark III and I'm running it into my Blackmagic Design and I'm running it into my computer. Now, the 5D Mark III doesn't actually output audio with the video. So all you get out is the video signal. So you've got to get your audio from a separate source. Now that's part of the reason why I chose the Blackmagic design is because 
I don't know if you can see this, but it's got an HDMI in, and then it's got a bunch of other inputs, including da, 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 uh, RCA connections. So that means I can actually go from a soundboard into here. And so the challenge was, not only do we have to run audio and video separately into this, but we also have to be able to record. And this works really well for things like YouTube Live and Facebook Live because they have the support to actually make this work. Uh, you can essentially like plug this into your computer, go to YouTube Live or Facebook Live and, you know, uh, go through Chrome, pick out your webcam, you know, you can pick out your audio and it's fine, it works. But with uh, Webinar Jam, it doesn't. My normal setup is I send out a uh, signal from my HDMI on my 5D Mark III out to this, and then I've got my audio recorder, which is Zoom H5, and I send that out to uh, Yonder Audio. I send that out to the audio ports here. So normally with YouTube Live and Facebook Live, that can all just get mixed in here, get sent into my computer, and go out, uh, you know, streaming through OBS or Wirecast or whatever. I can even go through my browser for Facebook Live, which is pretty great. And that's all well and good, except that we're not streaming to those. We're streaming to Webinar Jam. If you know Webinar Jam, if you understand Webinar Jam, bravo. I've been working with it for a few months now, and I think from a marketing perspective, it can be really handy and really useful. But from a production standpoint, it's been like an absolute nightmare. And, you know, there's not really a lot of content on, you know, online that talks about, you know, how the system works and, you know, how to best, um, how to make it work. There's some things on their site, but getting any real information and anything specific about uh, settings and, you know, formats can be really tricky. I'm sure there's a lot of stuff on YouTube Live and Facebook Live and how to live stream that. I might do a video on those later, but right now while it's fresh in my head, I want to talk about how to stream from a DSLR or any camera to the Blackmagic design into Webinar Jam specifically, because there really wasn't any information that I could find on this and anything that was really specifically useful. So using Webinar Jam, here's what I found. First of all, video settings. The 5D Mark III outputs an uncompressed uh, video signal through its HDMI, which is, you know, it's 1080p, it's, uh, it's 24p, or really it's 23.976. And so when you're selecting your video through Chrome, you have to make sure that that's what you pick. But even though that's what you pick, that's not what you'll be showing uh, when you go through Webinar Jam. Now on the audio side, even though the Intensity Shuttle Pro uh, does have audio in. Unless you're running audio in from the HDMI, it does not mix well in Webinar Jam. It's fine for any other software, but for Webinar Jam, it just won't work. And yeah, so obviously that's a bit of a nightmare. So my first problem with Webinar Jam was that getting audio and video to align wasn't always going that well. It wasn't always that easy and it was kind of a nightmare. And so the solution, actually, was to go separate audio. I've got an H4 recorder and the SD card reader is burned out on it, which basically means that all it's good for is being a audio interface. And so I use that recorder as a USB mic. And so what I'm doing is I'm using the H4 as a USB interface for my mics. So I've got my uh, wireless lav running into the H4 and then into my computer. And so that way I can have the video and the audio separate. It syncs up really well. It's really clean. I've got all the controls on the H4, but the problem is you can't actually record on a Zoom recorder while you're using it as a USB mic, which, you know, luckily that mic is burned out, so I can't record on it anyways. And so what I did was I actually got a second H5 recorder, which I've been wanting to do anyways. And so what I've done since, I'm running my wireless mics into that recorder, and then I'm running the line out from that recorder into my H4, which is my USB interface, which goes into my computer. And, you know, that way I can have separate video and separate audio synced up 
it looks clean it's a really an annoying system to do just to do what i can do with you know youtube live and facebook live but it works and it's consistent and it's been clean. The other thing you have to remember when using Webinar Jam and audio recorders is your audio has to be set to 48 hertz. Is it 48 hertz, 48 kilohertz? Anyways, it's gotta be set to 48. Can't be 44.1, it's gotta be 48. We did one webinar where I could not figure out what was going on. And in the end, I'm pretty sure what happened was I had it set to 44 instead of 48. Uh, which is really good because I made Keith sound like a chipmunk for an hour in front of other people. He worked with it, he rolled with it, we fixed it in post, unfortunately. Um, but it, it all worked out. So the reason why I use the H5 to the H4 is so that I can record. Because, because the Zoom recorders can't record to SD and output to through USB. So you have to choose one or the other. So what I do is I go through the H5 to record the audio, set my levels, and then I go line out into the H4, which I can use as a USB interface. And so from there, you really have to use Chrome. I found Firefox was easier at first, but we've, we've since worked out some bugs and I and Chrome seems to be the best way to go. So the first thing that Webinar Jam does is it runs you through a camera test. Now this camera test can be really tricky because it's just kind of taking different combinations and playing with it to see what works. And you know mostly Webinar Jam likes to lean towards uh, the internal webcams. It doesn't really like external cameras that much. And you know, you, like it took a lot of fighting to figure this out. Like I spent like two or three days of just doing full research, you know, just in the beginning to get uh, get to a reliable place. And the system I'm using, I was using then after that is not the system I'm using now, right? I've since done more research to figure it out. So when you're going into your live room, either to do your live broadcast or to run a test, the first thing that Webinar Jam does is it offers you a prompt to select your camera settings. Now, this isn't an effective, uh, prompt where you would be able to like you know see all the different camera settings pick the right ones you know pick your video signal pick your audio signal go with that what it does is it essentially like cycles through different configurations to see what works best and what doesn't you don't have the option to say yes to this video signal but no to that audio signal it just kind of cycles through and probably the, the best way i've found to like control these uh, signals and to control what camera you're actually using is when you get to that point you can go up to the top of the screen and there's a little camera icon in your browser you click on that you go to manage your settings and from here you can actually choose what camera you want and what microphone you want as your default now once you've gone through and chosen your camera and chosen your microphone um, you can close out of that, you can go back to Webinar Jam, start the test, and the trick with this is that it's still gonna cycle through what it thinks is best. Uh, and if you choose, if you were to choose the first one, and the first one's always your default microphone, which will be the H4 and your webcam, if you choose that, you will not have the option to see your DSLR. If you wanna have the option to you know, see your Blackmagic design, your first answer has to be no. Now, I have no idea why that is, but it's just the way it is. So the second option you get will be, will be your Blackmagic Design and your USB mic. Now, the first thing you'll notice with the second option is that you'll see your DSLR, you'll hear the audio coming through, you need to double check that everything's in sync. Make sure that everything is there, have someone talk, make sure that their lips and you know their lips and audio are coming through you reasonably close and so when you get to this spot you'll see the video from your dslr and essentially like a four by three uh video screen with two black bars if you've gotten there congratulations you've made it and the reason and when you see that do not freak out it's totally fine that's not what you'll see what happens is, is Webinar Jam is gonna crop in on your video feed. 
which means that even though you're outputting like a non-compressed 1080 signal, it's going to go down to 720. And that's just and that's just the way it is. And so you have to keep that in mind while you're shooting as well, because everything isn't going to be the full frame of the 1080. It's going to be a cropped in 720. It's not like it takes the full 1080 and just, you know, outputs a 720 version of that 1080. They crop in, which is unfortunate. And it looks, uh, and it doesn't look as great. It would look way better if it was a 720 version of the full 1080p, but it's not. So that's unfortunate. So from here, once you've seen that, once you've seen that image, you know your audio's in sync, you see your videos working well, you can hit yes to that one, hit no to everyone else, all the other ones, because they're just gonna be uh, options for your webcam. And if you're shooting someone else, the last thing you want to have if it fails is have it come back to you, you know? Because, you know, you might be looking stressed. Or people would rather see a blank screen than watching someone freak out about what the hell they're supposed to do next. So once you're in your live room, you have to go up, click on the video signal, click on the microphone, have them all selected. You won't actually be able to hear it in the setup, which is very frustrating. There's no monitoring while you're doing it. It really is set up for someone who is you know, running this all by themselves. It's not set up for a crew to operate. So now you can turn on the video, you can turn on the mic, and you'll see your image. You'll notice that it's flipped around, but don't worry, that's totally fine. Your audience won't be seeing that. And you can also notice how much you're cropped in. And this is a really good time to make markings on your camera or whatever your reference monitor is to make sure that, you know, whatever you're filming, when you're filming, you're not framing to your actual camera monitor, you're framing to this monitor uh, so that your audience is getting like a cut off head or at least not too much, it depends on your style. But you want to be aware of that cropping and you want to ma manage it. And so from here, you're ready to go live, you're ready to manage it. This is all in you. Um, have fun. If you have any questions, just please leave them in the comments below. I'll get back to them. Uh, I may even do another video about this subject if there's more questions about things that I haven't really touched on or dealt with. So if you like this video and you're interested in more, I am planning on doing more videos, so feel free to subscribe, and yeah, see you later.